Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Retin Art Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, places where you can get those comic books, Kickstarters, mailbox, all sorts of random stuff that goes through my head, whatever you want, whatever I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about. So, I'm going to start off with uh, things that have been going on in my life, random stuff, uh, yeah, because it's been a while since I made a video. I had some battery issues with the van. Attempted, uh, ended up with purchasing three different batteries, and finally on the third battery it worked. So that chewed up a lot of time, three days worth of time, and uh, I've been doing a lot of wedding planning. As you know, uh, my daughter is getting married this Saturday, so things have been getting really busy lately, and so I'm trying to squeeze this video in when I can. Really cool stuff. We did some family pictures recently this week, and uh, Really cool stuff. Wish I could share those with you, but I don't want to ruin and spoil the uh, surprise of the wedding. And, yeah, last, recently, uh, I finished up Invincible, the finale, and uh, if you're not watching Invincible on the uh, Amazons, then I, I don't know what's wrong with you. You should be watching it. That's one of the only reasons to really have Amazon, is to uh, watch Invincible and the boys, and Paper Girls is coming to it soon, so... Check that stuff out. Uh, really cool stuff. I watched uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier on the Disney Plus. Really cool stuff. I loved it. it that whole run was awesome uh, with the Wakandans and uh, Carly, the the main villain. Um, she was she did an amazing job. And uh, yeah, that the ending and uh, everything with Isaiah and uh, the red, white, black stuff intertwined into the story. Really good stuff. You should watch it, that last episode. So good. Winter, Fal Winter uh, no. Falcon's Captain America suit was amazing. Check it out. And, uh, yeah, I was also, I started watching a show called Superman and Lois, where they're married and they have, uh, teenage kids. And, uh, it was really interesting. I like the take they have on it, where, uh, instead of the boys having the rivalry that every show has, where, they fight over who wants to date the girl. You've actually got one boy encouraging the other to, like, hey, go talk to her, make friends with her, and stuff, and he's butting out instead of getting into it. So I like that take and uh, stuff. But I don't know if I'll be able to finish it because I don't have uh, TV, you know, for the CW. And uh, it w I was, was watching it on HBO, but I let that lapse. It's gone now. And uh, so that's what's been going on lately. Uh, hopefully, after this wedding and everything settles down, I'll, I will have more time to be able to do this. I have some t-shirts in the works that I need to get done and put up on my Redbubble. And uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So, anyway, uh, let's get into this. First up on my list is of comics I've read is Goth Ghost Girl. This is Goth Ghost Girl number three. Really good stuff. Um, man, I love this series. It's coming out really good. And uh, as you can see, I've even got the t-shirt from uh, back in this on Kickstarter. The This t-shirt, I think, even shows up in the comic. So that makes it really cool, in my opinion. Yeah, so uh, yeah, there's the main girl right there wearing this t-shirt. Really cool stuff. Or not the main girl. She's in this. So let me start out with a uh, some credits here. So, Goth Ghost Girl is written by John Schlim Jr., drawn by Sergio Quejada, and lettered by Bernardo Brees. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, I've got the t-shirt. Imminent Hour is the name of uh, Goth Ghost Girl's band that she's in. And, uh, oh yeah, I'm even on the thank you page in... Uh, the Phantom Club as Gary Brantner of Rent Arb Studios Comics. That's pretty cool. I love that when it when I see those. And uh, yeah, thank you pages are kind of a small thing to do, but really big thing to do for the fans. I love it. And uh, I'm thankful that you do it that way. And this one's also autographed by John Schlim. So that's pretty cool. Silver ink. Fun stuff. So in Goth Ghost Girl here, number three... We have the main character, Lily. She's the ghost. And uh, she's being trained in how to 
how to be a spirit and stuff by this cat that can speak. And uh, he's training her on how to uh, help these three spirits. There's three little kid spirits that are trapped in a cellar. And uh, he's training her on helping them move on. And I guess when a spirit moves on, it gives the uh, ghost powers and energy. Uh, so I th I'm wondering if he has an ulterior motive to train in her how to do this so that he can use her to do something he wants done. That's what I'm figuring. But in the middle of all that, uh, one of the fans of Goth Ghost Girl gets the band Imminent Hour back together and uh, convinces them that uh, Lily is still out there somewhere and that if they did a seance then they could bring her to them and speak with her. So they do a seance they got their salt circle and candles and stuff going on and they actually draw her out and there's this yeah it's really cool and there's a finale involved even with uh, Lily's killer in here so that was pretty cool that they wrapped it up all awesome and nice like that and uh, and Lily she's trapped in the circle but obviously if you kick the salt and make a hole in it then the spirit comes out so it was really cool stuff I loved it love this uh, Fairly Odd Parents kind of style to the art. Really good job on that, Sergio. And uh, amazing colors and letters throughout the whole issue. Good stuff. So, yeah, when there's an issue four on Kickstarter, I'm on board. I, I'm i I'm all in with this. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't wear... I wouldn't buy the shirts if I didn't like the, the way the story's going. So, cool stuff. Really glad it's going like this. And... Uh, yeah, I think there were even two different stories in this comic, and it was it was an awesome read. So glad I'm back in this. Um, this one even came with stickers that. Oh, let's see here. Clear off my desk here. Uh, so you know, as you know, what I do with stickers is I I put them on the boxes so that I know what's in the comics. Uh, obviously, I've got like Hexed in here and uh, Jupiter Jet already have an ovation sticker I just got a new one with this one but this one's shiny silver and that one's just plain white so that'll be cool to put on here somewhere and I got a little chibi goth ghost girl there that'll be cool so yeah really cool stuff that I can do with these stickers and I got awesome prints and as you can see behind me I've got a little bit of a white space in this wall of prints and uh, so I've got a goth ghost girl print right here that has the whole gang on it, the whole band and their little fan. That'll go up there. And oh, that, that one right there is the cover to the issue I just read. So that's cool. That'll go up there. And then there's a picture of their fan, a print of their fan. So that that's really cool. I love uh, getting goth ghost girl comics in the mail. And uh, yeah, so... Good stuff. Um, now, let me see here. Next up on my list is a digital comic I read. Oh, too much glare. Is that showing right? Focus on that. That is 20 Fists. 20 Fists is one that I'm reading from... Uh, I, I got digitally from Twitter. Uh, this is an issue one of three. That is one thing I really like about it is the credits page well what have we got here the credits page actually has all the Twitter handles in it too and so and that's something I think everybody should do when they do when you do a comic and have all the Twitter handles that really helps out people like me that uh, that go through and review your comics so I will go through this credits page tell you who's working on this this has art by Kat Bauman Bowman I don't know how that's pronounced uh, Kat Bauman Gab Contreras, Gab Contreras, and lettered, that's the colors, oh, okay, whoa, let me start over again, I'm really being, spacing out here, art by Kat Bauman, colors by Gab Contreras, lettering by DC Hopkins, and written by Frankie White, Frankie White I am familiar with because uh, I read the digital version of uh, Broken Bear, and after reading it and loving it so much, I... I stepped up from the uh, 
digital version and went to the full print. So uh, I, that's in my read pile. Can't wait to reread uh, Broken Bear in physical format. Really good stuff. So when I when I heard that uh, Frankie was doing a Twenty Fists, I'm like, hey, I would like to read that. And he shot me some links. Crazy stuff. Uh, Twenty Fists is. It seems like it's about a town where uh, they they have a, a long-standing fight club thing kind of kind of going on. They meet at this bar and they fight, and they're not supposed to fight in the bar. The bartender is like, "Hey, knock it off, take it outside." You know the rules. And anyway, good stuff. And there's these rival teams, uh, as you can see right in there. Um, let me see. You can see in there. Uh, a lot of them have coats on. There's this team called the, there's this group, gang kind of people, they, uh, they call themselves the, um, the Big Jackets, or the Big Coats, and everybody else is kind of on their own thing. This, the group where the story is following is, I don't know if they really have a name, but uh, yeah, things are going crazy, and we find out through the story that... Uh, one person from each of the teams is actually in a relationship with each other. This one girl likes this girl that's in the big coats, and uh, they're on a Ferris wheel in this story. They're talking about it, and uh, the story just zoomed along so quick. Uh, 24 pages of just insaneness, mayhem, awesome art, and uh, awesome storytelling, if I might add. And uh, yeah, I really loved it. Twenty Fists, number one, is part of a three-point, three-part, three-issue st series storyline, and uh, yeah, it's just that um, from what I've been hearing online and stuff, the comic shops have been selling out of it. They get them on the shelves and they go quick. So uh, it, if you want a copy of it, talk to your local comic shop. Say, hey, find me this uh, Twenty Fists, and uh, let's see, Twenty Fists is from so Source Point Press. So, uh, really good stuff. Check out Source Point Press. Ask your comic shop to pick up an issue for you, or go right to Source Point Press and uh, get one off of their website. Twenty Fists, awesome stories, uh, three issue run, and uh, I recommend it. It was a good read. It was a lot of fun, and who knows where they're going to go from here? How are they going to wrap it up in three issues? I want to know all these question answers, and uh, yeah. So, that's that one. Next up on my list is a comic called This Land. This Land is about Maori gods and uh, Maori culture. A lot of cool stuff. Um, let me get to some... Where is the dang credits page? Oh, yeah. This credits page, like I said in the last one, I love it when credits pages at offer all the Twitter handles in that. This one has the Twitter handles, even throws up pictures of uh, the creators and stuff. So let me go through this one and tell you who's in, uh, who helps create this land. Mark Abnett is uh, the writer. He is a New Zealander that now lives in Scotland. And P.R. Dedelis is the, oh, this is kind of worded weird. Okay, P.R. Dedelis is the artist. Lazel Buenaventura is the colorist. And Hassan Otsman Elhau is the letterer. And what else have we got over here? So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much... Whew, man, that, those were some tough ones. Sorry about that. If I don't mean to offend you if those are your names. Um, yeah. So, what we got in this land is we've got this main character, Helna. And that was what drew me to it, really, is because uh, she's got some lava powers. As you can see, her whole body looks like it's made of lava. And uh, her outfit, whatever, what have you will. It reminds me of uh, Pele which I'm a big fan of uh, Polynesian culture. Spent some time in Hawaii and uh, I've been enamored with it ever since. So, you know, New Zealand, Maori, Tongan, Samoan, it's all really cool in my mind. And uh, 
Good stuff. Uh, so, I backed this one on Kickstarter a while back. Got it really fast, if you ask me. And uh, so this time around, I'm getting issue two. They have a Kickstarter running right now, and I'm getting a pin that looks like that hand. Check it out. So I've got the tier that's going to get me this comic, or issue two, and a pin that looks like that from Aroha Comics. Really cool stuff. Uh, this one came with this card, very shiny. Same picture as on the cover. And it also came with the business card of Mark Abnett. That's Aroha Comics. That's his card. He just... Really cool. So, this land uh, is 52... Let's see, 52 years after the death of uh, technology is when this story takes place. So this this starts up with she's telling... She has a whole bunch of kids around a campfire and she's telling them an exposition kind of story. Uh, Helena is telling these kids about a time before technology and all that. And the gods, they fought. And she tells them about... Uh, she tells them about the sky god and the earth god. Uh, Ranganui is the sky father. And Papa Tuanuku is the earth mother. And there were these other gods, demigods, that split them up. Separated earth and and uh, sky from each other. So that's a cool uh, exposition there. I, I really enjoyed that take. And then we get some exposition here about um, how the earth uh, was into technology, which is our time right now. And uh, some people sabotaged and ruined the world for the rest of the people. And now we're left with this world that this comic takes place in where uh, these Maori gods now live in their own kind of society and uh, it's pretty cool that was that was interesting the way they're doing it and so as she's telling these kids she told them that story and then she wanders off with another uh, fellow teacher girl you see and this fireball appears in the sky and it lands right where the kids were and so they race back to the beach to uh, find that all these kids had been crystallized. That's really cool too. It says this land. Oh. And uh, so they've been crystallized and out from that the haze walks this guy. And uh, yeah, out walks this guy and he's saying um, bring me Maui. And they, she ends up fighting and beating him senseless and he's in his jail cell the next morning and she's questioning him and for some reason he speaks a language that only she can understand nobody else and so they make her question him and uh, she finds out that he's trying to find Maui he wants to beat him senseless or something and uh, the only way he can do release those kids from their crystalline forms is if she brings him to Maui and so she gets this crazy idea in her head that that's the only way I can do it. I gotta release him. And so she goes to a, a, par, a pub in town and uh, you get the scene like in Deadpool where uh, she's assembling a team but everybody that applies has got kind of stupid power sets. And uh, no, too much glare. Let me see here. So I'm trying to get it. There we go. Anyway so all these people are interviewing for the part of uh, being on her team and uh, and she's like oh brother but then she ends up with that entire roster of imbeciles and whatever's as her team and so it's crazy stuff a lot of crazy stuff in the story um, interesting way to do it and uh, set in the far future kind of thing so check out that um, yeah, we'll see where that goes from here. Um, there is a Kickstarter for issue two running right now. When I get to the uh, Kickstarter news of my comic, or my video, I will tell you all about that because that's in those show notes. Next up on my list, ow, oh, man, my back. I'm getting old. Uh, Lovecraft P.I. Lovecraft P.I., that's a bookmark that came with this book. Lovecraft P.I. here. This is a shot in the dark. Look at that beautiful cover. Painted. Um, 
Let's see here. Find the credits page for you because that is some interesting stuff about that. Printer, printer. Here we go. There's the credits page for you. All right. This is written and edited by Fritz Stryker and D.W. Kahn. Illustrated by Antonio Brandeo, Brandeo. With breakdowns and shadows by Fritz Stryker. Lettering by Hannah Ostman. And cover art by Paul Shipper. So Paul Shipper did some amazing paints on that cover. Made it like, you know, Indiana Jones styles covering. Pulp covers what have you, and uh, that's pretty much what this is. It's a very Indiana jones -ish. Um We've got Detective Ward Lovecraft, and uh, he's on the case. He goes down to a town called, it's a, a, it's a shipping town called Innsmouth, and this town relies heavily on fishing and stuff for their uh, economy. And so he goes down to investigate a murder, in a museum and uh, a book was stolen which is like a necromancer ne necromonicon kind of book like what you would see in army of darkness and uh anyway there are these crazy uh fish people that come up out of the water and they're attacking people and there's a blonde lady that's seducing uh the main guy that she she pits the uh a pastor that's in charge of basically the only church in town and she pits him up against a guy that uh, runs the uh, the cannery and uh, it's all crazy stuff um, yeah anyway uh, sorry so she's all this crazy stuff's going on the town's falling apart fish people are coming up taking killing people left and right the police chief is trying to help him and keep the town alive. All sorts of crazy stuff. There was an awesome joke at the very, 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 very end of the trade involving the police chief. And I won't spoil that one for you. And there's huge kaijus that come up there. He is summoned up out of the ocean with this uh, Necromonicon book. And uh, yeah, crazy stuff. I really love this so much. Um, I got familiar with Lovecraft P.I. Thanks to uh, Miss Katonic High, one of my favorite comics, meets Lovecraft P.I. They Two comics did a crossover event, and so I like those comics so much that after I found uh, Lovecraft P.I. on the Twitters, I found his Etsy page and bought these comics from him, so that helps him out if you want to help him out. You can go to his Etsy, Etsy page and search for Lovecraft P.I. Or, uh, the, he has a Kickstarter going right now for one of his books. Uh, the Curse of the Reanimator is on Kickstarter right now. I will tell you about that in the Kickstarter news. And you could probably get this book and that book and Lovecraft meets Miskatonic High. All that, all that fun stuff in one bundle together. Really cool. So, uh... Now I'm going to move on to, sorry, I'm kind of rushing this because this is the second time I've done it and I got to go pick up a kid soon. I'm going to go into mailbox, Rent Arbs mailbox. So what have I got in my mailbox this week? Oh man, I, well, it's not been a week. It's been a couple weeks. I got so much good stuff. So this one is from Redbubble. Redbubble is where I print my stuff, my uh, fun stuff with uh, my shirts and my, all that. I sell my own shirts on there. Cool stuff. As you know, I like stickers to uh, label my comics with. So I got me a Spider Gwen sticker to label my... so that I could uh, distinguish that box. Here I have the Great Expectations wall from the Spider-Verse movie. That'll be cool. So that'll go on my Spider-Man box. I got Spider-Man 2099's face mask. Love it. I'm a big fan of 2099. Here's Multiple Man's t-shirt. I am the hugest, hugest, hugest fan of Multiple Man. So I've got this shirt for myself also. This will go on my X-Factor box. Really good stuff. My Multiple Man box. Here's some classic X-Men from the 90s. Here's X-Factor from right now. X-Factor spelled with a K. If you uh, search for that on uh, the Twitters, 
X F A Q T O R, you will find some really cool stuff, some really cool people to follow, the creators of X Factor right now. And here's some Mutant and Proud X Men stuff, obviously going on my X Men box. And here's some Invincible. I have a huge poster of this up on the wall somewhere. Actually, I can see it right there, but I'm not going to turn the camera around. So that'll go on my Invincible box. There's Invincible number one sticker. Sunstone, which not safe for kids, as you can tell from that picture, but really cool stomach, really cool comic stories about um, love and relationships and dominatrix and subbing and really good stuff. Uh, yeah, I love that story. And so I wanted to mark that box. Here's the, here's the logo of the collar from Sunstone. Cool stuff. I love it. I already have one on my laptop, but I needed one for my comic book boxes. And then there's a picture of uh, Cat and Allie together. Or Allison is Cat. Allie Cat. And oh man, what's the other girl's name? I cannot remember right now. It's blank in my mind. Um, but as you can see, the collar is in there right there. Uh, Lisa. Lisa and Allie. And uh, Oh yeah, and if you're watching this right now, um, Stefan, uh, please talk your wife into uh, putting some Bloodstone stickers on Redbubble somewhere so I could buy those, because I'd really love to have some Red Bloodstone stickers uh, for my boxes, because that's a good series. I love it so much, and uh, yeah, really loving what I'm reading from that, and I'm get I need to get some of those Punderworlds, but I, I haven't really read those yet. I'm waiting for them to come out in print, hard copy. Which I think here is coming soon. Oh yeah, I also got this, a Rentnard Studios clock. I love it. I'm my best customer. I put my stuff up on uh, Redbubble, and well, about 90% of my sales is me. But there's 10% of you out there somewhere who's been buying my stuff. Love it. Thank you for buying my stuff. It helps me out. It makes me real feel really happy. Next up on my list is a DVD that I got in the mail from Netflix. Yes, I still do DVDs from Netflix. This one is called Your Name. Uh, a while back I told you about a movie I watched called Weathering With You. This is from the same creator and just amazing, beautiful, stunning imagery and uh, you just don't expect that out of an animated thing. Artwork that good, but holy crap. So I had to see what else that dude did. And so this is uh, Your Name from Netflix. Can't wait to watch that. And I got Snow White Zombie Apocalypse number three. Man, I can't wait to read this one. And uh, I got this one from the Kickstarters. So that one comes with a sticker as well and a postcard. That'll be going in the read pile. Temerity number one and two here. Looks like uh, they're both signed too. Temerity here uh, from Gemma Young and Chad Harding. Uh, I highlight those names specifically because they're both Utah artists and I'm a Utah artist up here in Riverside, Utah. So I've got to, got to support the Utahs. And you may know some of those names uh, from Harley Quinn. Chad Harding, he does an amazing job drawing Harley Quinn and uh, actually works for DC Comics drawing Harley Quinn, not just fan art. And then there's Temerity the sticker that'll go with this uh, comic book. Pretty cool stuff. Love it. Can't wait to read it. Aliens and weirdness. Good stuff. So, yeah. And I've got La Fay number four here. This is a series that I'm really loving from Evolution Publishing. Good stuff. Comes with prints, which, I, as you know, I have a blank wall here that needs filling. Prints and a lot of trading cards. Not really into the trading card thing, but I do have a book full of them. Got Operation Eclipse 1 and 2 here. Loving it. And comes with a sticker that'll go on my box. So that'll be cool. Um, Operation Eclipse. Can't remember what spurred me to back that one. Like crazy Who's texting me? And so, then I also have a comic called Crow Creek. It's got stickers also. And Crow Creek is about a zombie outbreak on a Native American re reservation. 
good stuff. Um, so check out that cover. Seriously, that is amazing. And uh, this is one from Kablam Printing and IndiePlanet.com. That is where I also do my Peter Pan the Vampires, is through Indie Planet and uh, Kablam Printing. So got to support my fellow Kablammers. Good stuff. Um, so I'm pretty sure if you wanted this issue yourself, you could go to uh, IndiePlanet.com and search for Crow Creek. That's the uh, end of my mailbox. Now I'm going to go on to Kickstarter news. And oh man, I have so many. Oh man, and I gotta get my kids soon. So, Kickstarter news. Let's see if I can burn through these really fast and uh, go pick up my kid. Glenn in Monsterland is on Indiegogo right now. Check it out. It's, uh, Glenn in Monsterland is 48 pages of all ages fun. It's a comedy adventure about a gang of monsters who rebel against their evil masters. Glenn is an apprentice witch who is left in a prison dungeon to rot and, uh, she escapes and all these monsters be become friends with her and help her out. So check out Glenn in Monsterland. Uh, they messaged me on Twitter and said, hey, you mind checking out my thing? And I checked it out and I said, hey, this looks really awesome. It's like uh, Saturday morning cartoons kind of style. Uh, I, I could really see myself watching this every Saturday morning as if when I was a kid. So check out Glenn in Monsterland on Indiegogo. It is 48 pages, 52 after extras, on Indiegogo right now. Lamp Black, number one, is a fantasy horror comic in a cinematic style, which means it is 8.5 by 11, wide printed, and uh, it is really cool. I got interested in it. Um, it started. I backed it because it is, it is really awesome. The artwork is amazing. Oh, okay, let me just read my notes because I'm getting... Way off topic. A girl whose paintings come to life. A deaf boy who wants to be a soldier. And a story of passion, passion art, and war inspired by Studio Ghibli. Lamb Black is a black pigment that artists use. And is primarily made from suit, soot and used in paints and inks. It is. This is a 24-page story about a girl that draws with Lamb Black ink. And uh, the monsters, it's got horrifying ink monsters that come to life from her drawings. Wondrous Forbidden Magic, American Sign Language, that's cool, and Runaways and a Cat. So yeah, and as I said, it's long bound, uh, printed wide, really cool stuff. I think I'm backing it to a tier where I also get a pin. I'm a fan of the pins. And uh, so check it out. I'll get one of those ink monsters or something as a pin. I can't remember which one I picked. So Lamp Black, number one, on Kickstarter till May 6th. That's soon. That's like tomorrow. Ruination 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter right now till tomorrow. It is about a comic series about soldiers that jump through portals to post-apocalyptic worlds and find magical artifacts and prevent a war from destroying their homes. It's 26 pages. Ruination 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now till May 6th, tomorrow. Tank McGregor and the Mechanical Menace is on Kickstarter right now. This is a graphic novel, 121 pages of awesome art. The artwork looks amazing, hilarious. It's got a quirky style, uh, similar to, uh, I would say, Invincible, even. And, uh, yeah, it, it looks really cool. Craziness. Uh, just check it out. Um, there, there were no uh, social media handles to uh, link to it. So if you do have social medias and this is your Kickstarter, let me know. I'll tag you in them. Tank McGregor and the Mechanical Minutes graphic novel on Kickstarter till May 6th. Sparrow number one is on Kickstarter right now. It's a coming of age story starring Elena Yen, daughter of legendary heroes, the Red Falcon and the Sentinel. Two founding members of the super team known as the Night Guard. 18 year old Elena is in high school and she suffered a tragedy, tragedy, lost one of her parents, one of her superhero parents, what, the day she discovered her superpowers. There was a uh, preview on the Kickstarter campaign and it was like only six pages. 
And when I read it, I'm like, I was in. You had me right there. I was sold. I had to back this. Amazing looking stuff. Those preview pages will blow you away. Check out the campaign. Read those preview pages and you will back it also. Sparrow number one on Kickstarter till May 7th. Abysmal Albion number two is on Kickstarter right now. A Lovecraftian eldritch survival story. Uh, Abysmal Albion returns with the second issue of Cthulhu Mythos inspired a post apocalypse survival horror set amongst the ruins of modern Britain. This is a project that, that Kickstarter loves. 28 pages of black and white comics on Kickstarter till May 7th. Mutiny Magazine number zero. Check it out. Uh, so when I was a kid, well, a teenager, I don't know. Yeah. When I was a teenager in the 90s, we had a magazine called Wizard Magazine. It told you all the stuff about comics, movies, stuff that was going to happen or would, would be a dream to happen. Action figures, all sorts of stuff. And then it went away in the, the 2000s, like... So, for a couple decades, I had this magazine. I was... I loved it so much. I got my art lessons on how to make comics from those magazines. And I was sad to see it go. Mutiny Magazine, number zero, looks promising. Like, it's got the same vibes as that. And I hope this does well, because I would love to have a magazine that tells me about indie comics and mainstream comics together in the same place. Really good stuff. Um, 55 pages or more, depending on how the campaign ends. And love that wizard vibe to it. You could get in on the ground floor with the issue zero right here, which will you'll never see again. Another issue zero. It's going to have special covers, some of the by artists that you got to look up to believe, because there's some amazing artists doing work on these. And uh, yeah, I hope it does well. I'd love to get in. Uh, I'd love to see these in my comic shop every month. So. Um, Check out Mutiny Magazine number zero on Kickstarter until May 8th. Sentinel number three. The ship is leaving the station. The Sentinel saga continues as we meet the crew of the a OAA Redstone. 24 pages of space-based society known as the OAA, Orion Army Authority, follows a crew of the ship called the Redstone. Reporter uh, Soros Vetti is embedded on the Redstone, investigating a new threat to the spacefaring republic. Check out Sentinel number three on Kickstarter until May 10th. Busy Little Bees number one is on Kickstarter right now. A supernatural thr thriller, Sebastian visits his sister, Mina, in an, in an asylum in an attempt to help her re rehabilitation. But the evening takes a dramatic and terrifying twist. So, uh... They, they come from a wealthy family, and uh, he's the only one that believes she can get better. So he visits her, and he's because he has money, he talks the hospital into letting him uh, bring a harpsichord in for her to play. And uh, I saw the artwork. It looked amazing. As soon as I saw the harpsichord, I was like, wow, this is awesome. And uh, I, I'm a fan of harpsichord. I seen it. The artwork made me think, instantly think of Tori Amos music. It's 26 pages. The R Rocks, check out Busy Little Bees on Kickstarter till May 11th. Time Before Time, the process edition, is just that. It's a process edition examining the creation of the image comic book Time Before Time, step by step, from the idea to the finished comic book, 48 pages of behind the scenes amazingness. If you ever wanted to know how comics are made, or how this one specifically is made, check it out. Time Before Time is like a, The Wire meets Quantum Leap. And at, keep in mind, this is just the behind the scenes. I'm sure you can get the behind the scenes and the original comic with it. Time Before Time Process Edition is on Kickstarter until May 12th. Beyond Mortal number 1 by Colin Bunn and Danny L Luckert is a cosmic horror and superpowers. In Beyond Mortal number 1, the world's mightiest superheroes have to battle elder gods from beyond our reality. It's a 64 page comic. Amazing artwork. And uh, kind of boys esque uh, art style to it, or storyline. So check out Beyond Mortal number one by Colin Bunn. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! Why is that? 
Ooh, I gotta go get get my kid. Okay, so check out Beyond Mortal number one on Kickstarter till May 13th. Smokeweed See the Future, the graphic novel is on Kickstarter right now. Um, it is in the Destiny New York ser series, and uh, it's about a girl who, she's attempting to make it easier to see the future, because you normally in this world, seers have to stick their face in some water, and then they see the future and tell the person. So she's tr she's works at a uh, marijuana legal store, and uh, she decides that she's going to uh, grow her own strain to help her see the future better, and it turns out that uh, it actually helps her and the person she's seeing for see the same vision. And it's 70 pages in the Destiny New York series. I love that series. As you know, that's one of the series I back every time it comes up. Uh, I could fill up a whole box of just Pat Shand, Destiny New York stuff, and uh, Miskatonic High. There's a couple White Ash, a couple stories that uh, I'm backing because I love them no matter what they're doing. Good stuff. And uh, so check out Smoke Weed, See the Future, the graphic novel on Kickstarter till May 14th. Now, Off Into the Sunset Anthology is a collection of stories inspired by Westerns. Curated by Brent Harshman. 120 plus pages of numerous creators based on Westerns. Westerns in space. Westerns in, as spies. Westerns as knights. Actual Westerns. Cowboys and stagecoaches. Whatever. Check out, check out Off Into the Sunset Anthology on Kickstarter until May 14th. This Land, number two, as you know, the comic I just reviewed. This Land, number two, is on Kickstarter right now. In a world reborn of superpowers and Maori gods, Helna must guide Tane in search of the demigod Maui. Check out This Land, number two, on Kickstarter till May 16th. You can back it. You can get the pins. You can get issues one and two together. Do that. Stan Lee's back channel, number one, is on Kickstarter right now. Back in uh, 2015, Stan Lee got together with uh, Tom Echo and Andy Tong and started creating a comic called Back Channel. And yeah, yeah, as you know, Stan Lee died, and uh, so this comic had been running on um, online as a web comic that you could check out, and now they're trying to get it into print. So the story is about how when a child comes of age, they can realize that their parents aren't exactly the wonderful people that they've always held in their hearts and minds. And now they realize that uh, not everything about their parents is what they thought. And this is the story about the next stage in that relationship between kids and parents. 130 page hardcover. Stan Lee-ness. Uh, you can get pins that have Stan Lee on them. Really cool stuff. From Rocket Ship Entertainment, the people that bring you uh, Heart and Brain, Awkward Yeti. Things like that. Um, so check out Stan Lee's Back Channel Volume 1 on Kickstarter right now until May 19th. Saturn Effect Alpha is on Kickstarter right now. Saturn Effect Alpha is a 24-page first of eight series. And two siblings living in the colonies on the moons of uh, Saturn. And it's, it, from what I read in the first issue, it's... It looks like there's like a mining community going on down on the planet and space stations and there's a war between the people that are working in the mines and the people that work on the space stations. Crazy insaneness and uh, yeah the the story was so kinetic and so energetic and reminded me of Aeon Flux. Really good stuff. So check out Saturn Effect Alpha on Kickstarter issues 1 and 2 till May 19th. Lovecraft P.I. is on Kickstarter right now for The Curse of the Curious, the curious Case of the Reanimator. So uh, Lovecraft P.I., the, the other trade that I read a while ago, is on Kickstarter right now. And, uh, oh shoot, well, I'm running out of time, have to go pick up my boy. So check out Lovecraft P.I. on Kickstarter right now until May 21st. And, uh, yeah, you can get Lovecraft P.I., A Curious Case of the Reanimator, Noir hardcover, which I'm sure you can also get um, 
And a, a Shot in the Dark, you can get Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High. All these things could be available. Check them out on Kickstarter right now. Lovecraft P.I. till May 21st. I'm going to end right there. Um, I'm sorry for the uh, people I haven't got to yet, but I will hopefully be able to get to you in the next week because you guys are going till at least the 27th and beyond. So I'm going to end it right there. Thank you for watching. If you have a comic you need me to know about, hit me up on the Twitters, Facebooks, wherever you can find Rentnarb Studios Comics. Uh, send me a message, an email at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com and say, hey, check out my comics if you have a comic you want me to know about. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for watching. This has been Gary Brandner of Rentnarb Studios, and I'm out.